Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. I, Tonya, is, yeah, that's just an ugly film. I'm just gonna get that out of the way. It's an ugly story about reprehensible people who do stupid and or despicable things. Now, that would not necessarily be an insurmountable obstacle for a movie, especially one billing itself as a black comedy, but I, Tonya, is not made with the care or the consistency of tone that would be required to pull off such a feat and it's too busy winking at the audience to watch where the heck it is putting its feet. In short, this is a movie that attempts something of a triple axle and then trips, falls, and bloodies itself all over the ice. The trouble starts early when the title card promises us that what we are about to see is based on wildly contradictory testimony and multiple points of view. Uh, okay, okay, so, so this movie is not going to pick a definitive point of view. Oh, okay, fine. Tricky, but fine. There will be multiple narrators that break the fourth wall, in addition to those same characters appearing in video interviews talking to interviewers. Okay, fine, unnecessary, but fine. And then, and then, this Tanya Harding biopic enters into the depiction of domestic violence, and this is where the movie oversteps big time. Tanya Harding suffered abuse at the hands of her mother growing up. This is played for laughs in the first 20 minutes of this movie. She is also beaten by her boyfriend and later husband, Jeff Galuli. Then she turns immediately to the camera and delivers a literal punchline. Oh boy, isn't domestic violence funny? <laughs> no, it is not. It just sucks all the air out of the room right away. There is one scene of visceral abuse, which ends up in a character getting actually stabbed with a knife. And then the movie cuts to Alice and Janney's character, speaking directly to camera and saying, hey, what family hasn't had its ups and downs? This is about when I started to hate I, Tanya, and we hadn't even seen much skating at that point. More on that aspect of the movie later. I shouldn't have to explain why this movie is tone deaf, but I feel that I must. You see, when making a movie about despicable characters, and that's what these characters are, with the exception of Margot Robbie's Tanya Harding character, who I believe is meant to be some sort of hard scrabble folk hero by the end of this thing, you have to find ways to make those actions either justifiable or at least palatable. I, Tanya does nothing of the sort. It's just ugly. It's just an ugly subject matter to begin with, and then they try to mine domestic violence for humor. To say that it doesn't work is an understatement. It eliminates all identification with the characters, and as I said, sucks all the air out of the room. I, Tanya really, really wants to be just like to die for. That movie kept the tone singular throughout and gave us pitiful or despicable people that were also easy to relate to in many ways. This opening period with Janney's mother and Sebastian Stan's Galuli was just a parade of hatred and discomfort, accompanied by glib commentary that is supposed to be irreverent, but just comes off as overindulgent. Eventually, the film does get around to the reason why we really came, and right after Robbie, as Tanya, tells you that she knows this is why you're really here, the incident, the attack on Nancy Kerrigan, which was planned and executed by Harding's bodyguard, Sean Eckhart. And the movie really, really wants to turn this part into sort of a whimsical comedy of errors, a, a, a wacky confluence of events like The Big Lebowski with Eckhart as Walter Sapchek. And maybe with a little tightening it could have actually become that. But the focus keeps shifting, the narrative never gels, and every now and again Jeff Galuli will haul off and hit Tanya Harding again, and the gears of the incident storyline never seem to really catch on anything, you know, exciting. The incident is really what the movie is about, because it sure as heck isn't about skating, Tanya Harding's training regimen or her performances on the ice are barely even touched on. The skating scenes in particular don't give any sense of what made Harding an Olympian. There's no sense of scale or admiration for the difficulty or athleticism because these scenes are shot in this weird sort of close-up medium shots most of the time and all of the wide shots involve obvious CG face replacement creating this odd sort of patchwork effect which plays terribly. Look, I'm not saying that in order to play a figure skater an actress has to do all of her own skating, but the effects have to settle the illusion properly. Look at, look at Black Swan! Natalie Portman didn't do all of her own dancing. There were digital effects used, but you can't argue with the end result. I mean, she won an Oscar for crying out loud. And now there's Oscar talk for Margot Robbie and for Alison Jenny. Look, they both do fine acting in this movie, but, but acting is only one element that serves a story. And the story told by I, Tanya is unfocused, tone deaf, and ultimately, just, I'll say it again, it's just, it's just ugly. I award I, Tanya a small bag of popcorn. It's a biopic with no insights and a comedy with no real laughs, except a couple of uncomfortable chuckles.
Well, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to follow me, the Colonel, on Twitter at Movies That Pop. And click the icon right down there to visit our channel if you'd like to see more. And support us by clicking subscribe while you're there and by clicking the thumbs up icon below. I'd like to hear your thoughts on I, Tanya in the comments as well. Let's hear it. In the meantime, thanks for watching. I'm the Colonel, and I feel like I just got galooted by this movie. <laughs>